The Ottawa Senators are back, and in this episode, we finally finish up this season. It's taken much, much longer than I ever would have expected, but we've had a lot of twists and turns, of course, whether it be due to player injuries, having to make moves, and now being at the trade deadline where I wasn't sure if we were going to make major moves, but certain opportunities have presented themselves, especially in the aftermath of the required trade. Now, first thing to note, somehow, some way, I forgot to add our defenseman to the wheel when I spun it. Uh, not really sure what I can do about that for this season. I don't really think there is much that I can do at this point. It was just a dumb mistake, and instead of potentially costing me Mark Borowiecki or somebody, I mean, really, let's be honest, I, I got lucky it landed on Duclair. If I added a defenseman, I didn't want to, you know, lose any of these defensemen here. So really, I did luck out. I think at the end of the day, we'll just let it go. Of course, losing Anthony Duclair means we bring on Tyler Toffoli for the rest of the year. There was some debate as to whether or not I should be allowed to trade the players, but I think at the end of the day, I like the way that we did it, you know, in terms of, okay, I'm losing this player, here's the offer I'm taking, and I'm not getting rid of who we got back in return, at least for the rest of the season. If Tyler Toffoli's deal went for longer than this season, I'd probably trade him at the draft. But I think we're going to leave that as is. And at the very least, my punishment for not adding defensemen is that we're going to hold on to Tyler Toffoli and not acquire a first-round pick from Boston for him. That said, we're not done with trades. Again, the whole point of you know moving Anthony Duclair was to call up Shane Pinto, and that is still the plan. But we left the last episode with the question of whether or not we also try to pull off a blockbuster move or two, because there are some top-notch players available around the league somehow, some way, including the likes of David Posternock on Boston, on the Calgary Flames, a certain Matthew Kachuk, and on the Detroit Red Wings, of course, Dylan Larkin, who is at a nice little reduced rate. So... There are some moves to be made. Uh, of course, Braden Point was also available, but his money total, we'd need them to retain salary, and I don't think that they would do such a thing. So the first thing that we're doing here, you guys are on board for me acquiring Matthew Kachuk, and that is exactly what we are going to attempt to do here. It's going to be rather expensive, but we're going to see if we can pull it off. Now, obviously, money-wise for Kachuk... It's a little bit expensive. Now, in this series, we aren't recognizing no movements or no trades. Maybe we should have, because in theory now, I move Taylor Hall if we're in a little bit of money trouble, or perhaps somebody else. But at the very least, uh, we are going to look to use Nemesnikov to get this deal done. A lot of you guys wanted me to move on from him last year, and I said, no, let's hold on to him. And unfortunately, that's backfired. You know, the, the value that he had you know, acquired at the end of this season... People are like, oh, trade him. I like to hold on to him. And then he had an amazing season last year, and I felt so vindicated. This season, though, it just hasn't been the same. You know, 40 points in 63 games. You know, there, there's no way he's scoring 51 points in the next 19 games. So, unfortunately, he's really dropped off. It's not a contract year. There's a chance he could bounce back next year. But for now, it's the right decision to cash out on him and to try and acquire Matthew Kachuk in the process, who does fit in on this team, and obviously Brady is on this team, and will continue to be on this team, so it makes for a very interesting trade. Uh, the only question, of course, is cap-wise, because this is going to leave me with roughly $3 million in space. Again, a reminder, our limit for this season is, actually, it's about $2 million. It's $76.7 million is the limit. So in order to pull off another trade... And this was talked about in the comments section as well. We're going to end up trading Nikita Zaitsev, which I said I didn't want to do, but some people had a fair point, and that is that Zaitsev's his you know his morale hasn't dropped. He's played really well uh, in the AHL this season, so one could have the argument, or uh, has he not played this well? Apparently, he hasn't even played that much in the AHL this season. Has he been hurt for that long? Point being. He's done all right when he's played over the past few years with the exception of season one. The argument's there that a team might be willing to give him a shot, especially, say, Detroit to try and move Dylan Larkin. So, we'll see what happens. But Nemesnikov for Kachuk is certainly going to be a target. 
I don't believe Calgary is going to be willing to retain salary, especially when you see how little salary that they actually have available now as it is. So that's a little bit rough, unless I can also acquire somebody else, say Milan Lucic, on that expiring contract. It, it's going to be tough because they did sign Sean Monahan to a wicked extension. I do wonder. Lucic is down to a 71. Woof. If we were to take Milan Lucic, technically I'd still be under the limit. But let's just say we go over to Kachuk here, try to get them to retain some salary. I'll take Luch back in the deal, and we'll try to make it work. So right there, that deal would still go through, apparently. And you see that the numbers have reset for whatever reason. So if we try 50% on Kachuk, I'm willing to take back Lucic. I don't think this will cost me the ability to get Dylan Larkin. Hopefully this works out, but I think being willing to take on the dead cap of Lucic for the rest of this season uh, will help in efforts to try and get some retained salary on Kachuk, which is going to help us out extremely. I do want to safety net this as well. Let's see if this goes through. The answer is no. That's not surprising. We'll go with a third rounder as well. So that would work. They just don't want to retain salary. So we are going to continue to try and get this to go through. Fourth rounder won't go through. What about straight up? Nemesnikov for Kachuk on half salary. We take on Milan Lucic for the rest of the year. That won't go through. I do want this to go through, though. Lucic's negative value is going to help a lot. Let's use a Nashville fourth. I want I want to push this through because it's that important to get Kachuk on half salary if we want to avoid issues long term. So if we take a look here at who we have to potentially move. Not that I want to move Borgo. There's also... Brown, Pilar, Poirier, Pinto. Pfft, tough question. Stock isn't that great. Nor is Bonvi. I'm willing to give them Bonvi and Scratchinch if uh, if need be. Neither of these two are going to develop. So if we can push this through, that works for me. Will this go through? The answer is no. I will also try to use Scratchinch to get this one through which might be a little bit cheap, you know, in terms of cheesing the AI, but I'm willing to do it. Will this go through now? The answer is still no. So, again, I, I had the feeling that they wouldn't want to retain salary here. So, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm tempted. Tempted to keep adding to this or just reduce the amount that I'm asking them to retain on Kachuk. Uh, let's use the Nashville 4th. Let's use the Nashville fourth. We'll just go through. Still no. Come on. Come on. Come on. Damn it. Right. How are we going to get this to go through? Because at this point, I'm giving up more value than I'd really care to. I don't think I'm going to be able to get them uh, to retain, unfortunately. At least as much as I'm uh, looking, looking to get them to retain. So, let's... Uh, Let's see what else we could do here. Is there one more player I can add? I don't want to get rid of Stepan. Getting rid of Stepan would be a bad, bad idea. Shout out to Motorcycle Guy. A staple. A staple of these videos. When I am on the road on tour at Girlfriend 24s. It's just, it's a staple. It's an absolute staple of this, of this channel now. Uh, you know, let's try our third. Will this go through? The answer is no. Okay, what if I take out those options here? We reduce the amount that I'm asking them to retain. 45% still won't go through. Even a little bit of uh, salary retained works. That still won't go through. You know, Lucic, I don't think Lucic is adding as much to the deal as I'd prefer. I really don't think he is, unfortunately. Will this go through? No. I mean, it would, but they just don't want to retain salary. What is the magic number to get them to retain salary on Kachuk and to get this to go through? I'm all right with it being a one-for-one. One. The value difference is fine as long as I can get them to retain. 25%? Still no. Damn. Let's go back to, let's go back to Lucic here. I'm willing to take on Milan. 25% retention on Kachuk. I get that he has five years left after this as to why they might not want to do it. Mm, I don't think I'm going to be able to get them to retain salary on Kachuk here. 
Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get them to do it. Okay, so instead we'll just take value back from the deal. But I plan on getting Kachuk onto this team. And we are still going to look to target Dylan Larkin if we can. So I am going to safety net this a little bit. Might be a little bit cheesy, but hey, the values are what they are. Let's take out that Columbus third. Let's take out the Calgary third. Let's take out a second and add the two thirds back. We are going to find the maximum amount of value that we can get here. So let's uh, try this again. Still too far off. We'll try Kachuk in a second for Nemesnikov. Still no. Okay. So I guess their values are quite close, even though Kachuk right now is on a negative value. Kachuk in two-thirds, just a bit low. Is there anybody that I want to add to this? So unfortunately, we have failed in my ability to get them to retain salary, but we should be able to make this work. I hope. Otherwise, this means someone else is moving on from the team. <sighs> I, I need him on retained salary, though. I need it. I'm willing to overpay for it. I am. It's official. I am willing to overpay to get Matthew Kachuk on half salary. It's just, it's too important to have Calgary eat this cap. It's way too important. So let's see what we can do. I don't care if I even have to give up a first round pick. I'll do it. I'll do what I have to do. So we will give them stock. Bonvi and Scratchinch, if I'm allowed to trade stock, I am. Uh, they'd have too many skaters within the organization. Those were all forwards, were they not? Yes, they were. So let's add a couple of low-value forwards on expiring contracts. Not named Milan Lucic this time. Uh, let's go for Phillips, Tulola, and Milos Roman. Milos. Calgary be over the maximum cap next season. Milan Lucic, come on down. Although, then again, this is for next season. You know, adding Lucic, it might freak the game out. And, yeah, they'd still be able to maximum cap next season. That's insane. Was that not an issue before? I mean, I guess it's because of these dudes. If I do this. And then this. Okay, so that works. Fair enough. I'd have to add at least one of them. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, let's add, uh, let's add a Tutulola. He'll help out the AHL team a little bit. Will this go through? No, it won't. Let's keep adding value. We need him on half salary. We need him on half salary. There is Shaw, who I don't necessarily want to get rid of. But it could be done. I mean, Wallstead's there, too. It's a lot to give up, but we do have Wallstead. Or we can give up a first rounder this year. What if I give up my second rounder this year? Will this go through? I hate to say it, it's totally worth it because we have Jesper Wallstead. I am going to give up Ashton Shaw in this deal. He's had a pretty damn good season in the AHL. That means we are pretty much putting all of our eggs into the Wallstead basket. But I'm going to give up Ashton Shaw. They'd be over the cap for next year. So let's have Shaw instead of Bonvie. I'll even take out Scratchinch for now. Will this go through? We give up one of our two top goaltending prospects to try and secure Matthew Kachuk on half salary. Please, please, please. This is taking a lot longer than I would have expected. Still no. What about now? Still no. I will continue to add to this. I am getting this to go through. I don't care. It is so important that we get them to retain. We'll add Scratchinch. What do you say now? Still, Oh, now you're saving money for re-signings. I see how it is. Uh-huh. We're getting closer to getting it to go through. Third round pick from the Arizona Coyotes. Still no. We'll add another one. Edmonton, third round pick. Still no. My God, Calgary. I get it, but Jesus. Second round pick from us. This is insane. Come on, please. Second and a third. I can't get him on half salary. I can't do it. What about 45% and you still get Shaw? Still no. What about 40% and you still get Shaw? Son of a, son of a, just son of a. 35% and you still get Shaw. There it is. Vladislav Nemesnikov and Ashton Shaw for Matthew Kachuk on 35% retained salary. The team is very upset that we got rid of Nemesnikov, but it had to be done. As Matthew Kachuk will join Brady on this team. Matthew now on 5.7 million. 
for the next five years after this. Fantastic. And we are not done. We will still be targeting one Dylan Larkin, which gets to be a little bit more difficult because I planned on using Shaw here, but what are you going to do? And we are going to look to move. Who are we going to look to move here? I do want to move Nikita Zaitsev. I am going to try to get Larkin... Actually, Larkin on half salary. Does he have an extension? Or is he just on an expiring deal? Wow, he's just on an expiring deal. So I don't even need to get them to retain. We can just get Dylan Larkin. And I'll be under the... That's perfect. Jesus, I thought that was a multi-year deal. Okay. Well, we're looking even better here. And I still have some low-end prospects. Uh, like Bonvi and Scratchinch to add in. So we'll use Nikita Zaitsev, we'll use Scratch Inch. That might go through on its own, as absurd as that is. Uh, we'll have to see. I am uh, just going to safety net up with a couple low round picks. Again, we have no restrictions on trading. That goes through Zaitsev and Scratch Inch for Dylan Larkin at bargain prices. Zaitsev is gone. It's going to piss off some people, but we have pulled off the double. Matthew Kachuk and Dylan Larkin are on the Ottawa Senators. So basically, it is Nemesnikov, Ashton Shaw, Nikita Zaitsev, and Scratchinch for Bra uh, for Matthew Kachuk, that is, and Dylan Larkin. That's some damn fine trading, if you ask me. That is some damn fine trading. Let's take a look now at what this team is going to be. We know, of course, that we still have to call Matthew up, and I still want to get Shane Pinto onto this team. And that will bring us up to 21 players, 70. We are under the team cap limit as well, which is perfect. So now this team is looking like we don't even, I mean, we know Matthew uh, fits in on the team. Let's get him into the lines. Let's figure out exactly what we're going to do here. But needless to say, uh, our playoff hopes have just been significantly renewed. Let's get Ilya Lyabushkin out of there. I'll add in Kachuk. And indeed, he fits in best on the second line. And if I take you out for Dylan Larkin really quickly, Larkin fits best on the second line as well, or potentially the top line. Interesting. So we have numerous options here in terms of how we want to set up this team. And Shane Pinto fits in best on the second line as well. Excuse me. So we do have a lot to think about. Hall on the top line. Colin White still isn't a perfect fit for this team. Brady on the top line. Formanton on the second line. Norris fits in best on the top line. As crazy as that is. Toffoli fits in best on the second line, but I don't really care about Toffoli. Let's say we move Pinto up. Abramoff was the one that had kind of struggled that I'm okay with taking out of the lineup. Let's get Matthew in there. And I think Tyler Toffoli might even end up being a healthy scratch because I don't really care about him. He wasn't my choice. But say we have Formanton, Pinto, Kachuk. I don't hate that. And then say we take out... I mean, then again, where the hell is Larkin going to fit in, right? We are still going to have some choices here. Larkin fits in on the first or second line. Can I send Pinto back down? Yes, but I can't send Formanton back down. Interesting. Honestly, I think the best move might still just be to have Shane Pinto in the AHL. I know, like, originally the whole controversy thing was like, oh, call up Shane Pinto. But I think, in theory, I could convince Eugene that it's for the best to still have Pinto in the AHL. Because we brought in Dylan Larkin, and look at how shiny, look at, look at your shiny new toy in Dylan Larkin. Also, you love to market around Brady Kachuk. Well, now there's two Kachucks to market around. Imagine that, right? So I think I think that's the game plan. Although, I mean, the alternative is I just don't... I mean, I don't know. It's a, We can still call up Pinto, but then uh, Tyler Toffoli... Tyler Toffoli is likely scratched or Formanton's traded. Because this fourth line of Batherson, Naslin, Pilar has been okay. Pilar has left a bit to be desired. And then again, White on the third line. 
with Logan Brown, I don't hate. Even though Logan's not a perfect fit for that third line, there might be a coaching change in the future. Okay. Well, this is the team. This is the team. I have a little bit of maneuvering that I have to do. But Kachuk, Norris, Hall, to Foley, Larkin, Kachuk, Formanton, White, Brown, Batherson, Naslin, Pilar is pretty much going to be the team. Unless we decide to send Pilar down. He's still only 20 years old. And we could play somebody else on that fourth line. Of course, Lafreniere is out for the season. That totally changes the complexion of this team. Because obviously Toffoli uh, would be further down than he is. But I think this is the uh, this is the way to go for the rest of this season. And then obviously if you know Lafreniere is here, then Toffoli's not on the second line. Maybe even Logan Brown would go down to the fourth line. So we do have some things to figure out here. Abramoff is affected by waivers. He's either going to be my healthy scratch or it's going to be somebody else. And then if we look down here at the AHL, I mean, again, Shane Pinto, at this point, it's Pinto, say, on the third line, and Logan Brown goes down to the fourth line, even though he's not an amazing fit there. And then you could argue that we just wouldn't be getting the most out of Logan Brown at that point and that we should trade him. You could argue we should trade Logan Brown right now anyway to maximize that value because he's never going to be a top six player for us. And then, of course, defensively, I'm still very happy with what we have. We need a better depth defenseman, though. We might not be done, and we might not even get to the playoffs until next episode, if we even get to the playoffs. We have no idea if we're even going to be a playoff team. I mean, we're in position to be now, and perhaps even more so in position to be after these deals. But I still want to take a look at what's going on. David Posternock is still there. He's on an expiring deal, though, so he's going to be stupidly expensive. Brian DeMoulin doesn't fit the team. Pasta only fits the second line. But you could argue at that point we wouldn't even be getting the most out of him. Uh, Jordy Ben only fits in on my top four. I want to find that better depth defenseman for this team. Uh, Kyle Pozo's really bounced back, which is crazy. I don't think, obviously, that we need any more changes to the offense. I mean, a different fourth line option could be nice, but we do know that we have people within the organization that we could use to do that. It's just, can I find a better depth defenseman? And I think, you know, we'll just, we'll go from within. At this point, there isn't really anybody here that I want to spend uh, a lot of assets on. I think we, we've done our spending, if that makes sense. So, let's go take a look. Not to mention, I mean, we only have $2 million left in cap space. It'd be very, very difficult to make this work from here. So, looking now. It's Kemper and Prosvetov, Shogard and Bednar. I could sign a different uh, backup goaltender. Lyabushkin's going to be sent down. And in terms of who gets called up, I, I genuinely don't know. Uh, really, it could be any of these guys. I don't know who fits in best on this team as a depth defenseman at this point. But we know Lyabushkin's going to be sent down. Uh, let's just say, because it's going to be Johnny Tyconic. I just don't want him sitting there. So let's, you know, there might be enough injuries. Johnny, congratulations. I mean, you're going to be sitting in the press box a lot, but you're now the uh, depth defenseman for this team. And then forward-wise, again, Brady Matthew. I think everything here is looking good. It's just what do I do with Abramoff? I need to check his trade value really quickly. And I knew certain players uh, wouldn't be happy with uh, me getting rid of Leah Bushkin and sending him down, but it needed to be done. Vitaly Abramov, what is your trade value? Honestly, it's worth it to me to just try to send you down. I think he'll be claimed. That's a third round pick at best. Just imagine what he'll do for that AHL team. I guess we'll we'll have to trade him here. We'll take another morale hit on the team. But again, with, with Matthew Kachuk and Dylan Larkin added, we are right back into contention this season. Ben and Bleed, Strawman Bleed in the fourth. Strawman makes a bit too much money. I was hoping for just draft picks. Third and a fifth there from Dallas. Third and a fourth from Tampa. We're going to send Vitaly Abramov to the Tampa Bay Lightning. He just didn't make the most of his opportunity while he was here. And he's not worth leaving around as a healthy scratch, unfortunately. So with that, I think we're going to call up Dustin Brown 
see how well he fits in on the team, and uh, potentially even have him on the fourth line if he's a better fit than Pilar. I still, of course, need to change around some player types and uh, some chemistries. But uh, Pilar here, Dustin Brown. Are you a good fit for the fourth line? You're okay. You're decent for the third line. I think uh, I think we'll bring in Dustin Brown. Pilar's not quite ready for prime time. So we'll be able to send him down. Dustin Brown will be on the fourth line. That'll get us a little bit more veteran leadership heading into the playoffs. It's kind of crazy, the deals that we just pulled off. Well, let's see what we have here. Nope, not amongst defensemen. But amongst forwards, we will send Pilar down. And uh, we can call up Melker as the new healthy scratch over Cedric Paquette. Of course, we have a lot of veterans at this point in the AHL just kind of sitting there to help boost up what was a much younger team before we decided, okay, sink or swim for a lot of these prospects. Actually, how well does Melker fit in on that fourth line? Yeah, about as well. Okay, so we should be good here. The only thing that I want to do before I optimize the rest of the team is sign a goalie or two just in case of injury. We have $18 million in cap space. And we are going to look to sign one Eunice. I shut out Toronto in the totally not playoffs Corpusalo. And we're also going to look to bring in... Let's bring Chris Drieger back to Ottawa. Now that he's, of course, had those breakout moments in Florida. We'll see if we can sign those two. And we should be good to go. If I'm not mistaken, we have a game today. We are playing Toronto. Go figure. And we win 4-1. to one. Beautiful. Corpusalo and Drieger both signed. So we're good to go. I mean, we lose Duclair, and that was kind of the catalyst for us making quite a few crazy changes. Uh, Corpus Sala will now be the healthy scratch here. Drieger will be the healthy scratch in the AHL. And then again, defensively from here, we're pretty well set up. I could look to get a better fit for that fourth line, but I don't think it's that important. We're going to see what Dustin can do. So from here, it's just a matter of getting the chemistry set up as best we can. The third line isn't perfect. From here, we're relying more on the talent level that's on the third line rather than actually having a good chemistry. We'll see how that works. The rest of the lines should at least have decent chemistry, plus the two top fives, or the top two lines being top fives, are both you know incredibly helpful. But at the end of this episode... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, you know, cut out the end of this one, or end this one here. We'll update everything, get this team ready to rock and roll. We'll sim through the month of March, hopefully make the playoffs, and sim through that first round matchup all in the next episode. But uh, your wish is my command. The Kachucks are united on Ottawa. Dylan Larkin replaces Nemesnikov, and we'll see if he can carry that weight. And again, we might still have some changes here in the future. That third line in particular... You know, what the future of those players are on this team, I don't know. Tyler Toffoli is going to be playing for a lot of money. Melnick's choice in terms of who he wanted to replace Anthony Duclair. Probably won't be here beyond this season because of Lafreniere, but we still have a lot of choices to make with this team in terms of what happens in the future. But for now, it's all sights set on the postseason. We'll see what happens in that next episode. <laughs>